So I had a recent comment about replacing L2 on a DS motherboard. Now L2 is a little inductor, looks a bit like a capacitor or a resistor, but it's an inductor that lives just next to the power switch there. And uh, it seems that sometimes if you drop your DS, if you, when you put it back together again, uh, this little inductor can come off. There's another one L4 over the other side of the, the motherboard as well. Um, but I thought last time I replaced the power switch, I used uh, a hot air blower and things like that. But I thought I'd try and replace this L2 just using the minimal tools. Now, when I say minimal, um, I'm going to use some solder. That's quite cheap. You can get from places. Maybe if you buy a smaller thing than that, maybe you could spend a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars on some solder. I'm going to use this USB soldering iron which is quite cool and that was I think around five pounds um, and I'm going to use some tweezers as well. Again you can buy a set of tweezers for um, not not much really so I'm thinking to get yourself a set of minimal tools to do some repairs to it you might be talking about 20 pounds 20 dollars that sort of thing to to try that i've got no idea whether it will work um, but i'm going to have a go anyway the other thing that's really useful to have is flux which uh, you quite often see people using uh, in syringes and uh, when you're soldering it back on putting a bit of flux makes it uh, attach better it makes the solder run more makes the solder runny now, the other thing that I'm going to need is a magnifying glass because I'm old. You might not be old. Your eyes might work. My eyes, my eyes don't work. Now, you can get magnifying glasses that um, are, like, are like this on a helping hands. Uh, you can get magnifying glasses that um, go on your head. They're a bit more expensive. They go over your eyes um, and you can use that as well. Today, and I know I said this is going to be the minimal tools today, but this is just so I can record it. I'm going to try uh, recording it, uh, my changing it on this um, digital microscope. But I'm using this purely so that I can record video. I don't know whether the video is going to be any good. You tell me afterwards, thumbs up, thumbs down on using this for, uh, for video. Um, but that's why I'm using that. And of course, it helps my old eyes as well. All right, so I might switch to this. This isn't that good quality. I think it's 720p. We'll see how that goes. I might switch to that um, as I'm doing this repair. So uh, here you go. So here's my um, board and it's got a um, the L2 missing. You can just see there. So I'll get my uh, mini soldering iron. OK, so that goes into there. Always the wrong way. I'll plug that in to my bench USB supply. All right, and with this uh, with this particular one, you have to hold it down um, to get it to start. So there's a little light. Come on, so this will get start now. Now to check it's check it's hot. The easiest way to check it's hot is um, to just rub some solder over it. As you can see from this one. Um, as you can see from this one, this is the one where the L2 is, it just says L2 there. You can just about make it out. Um, and the L2 is, um, missing on this. So this is, might be the problem on your board that the L2 is missing. All right, let's check my soldering iron. That's it. Now, another good thing to do with the soldering iron is to keep the tip clean. Uh, you can get a little piece of sponge like this. That you can just wet this one's not wet at the moment but uh you can wet it and then you can, it just cleans the excess off there so let's just try and go in um just put this at a different angle i'm just going to go and try and uh, those bits of solder that are on the board just see whether i can melt those it looks like i can all right All right, yeah, so I can easily get in with this little soldering iron just to clean that. Now, 
if I'd have taken this L2 off there, what I would do first is just clean this area um, because you see that is messy. It should look like a nice board. So I'm going to prepare that now. Um, one of the ways that you can do it is just if you've got a little bit of IPA, everyone who does anything with retro stuff has um, some isopropyl alcohol and also uh, Q-tips. So let's just spray a bit of uh, isopropyl on this. I'm going to spray some underboard as well. Spray that. Let's clean that here a bit. But it shouldn't really look as messy as that. You should. You're going for some clean. Oops. You're going to just. <laughs> that jump was me leaning on the soldering iron. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, always put your soldering iron somewhere safe other than spider math. All right, so you see that looks that looks a lot cleaner now. The cotton bud doesn't, but the uh, the board does underneath. All right, and another thing that's quite a, a a useful thing to do sometimes is clean the solder off the board, um, and you can use the solder wick for that. I'm not going to try it with this one. All right, so this is my working motherboard. And now I'm going to get this other motherboard. This is my donor motherboard. Uh, this has got already got an L2 chip on it, an L2 inductor on it. Uh, uh, but if you see, this has got a broken, a broken switch. The switch has got no widget. So this seems to happen a lot. Um, I bought 25 old DS boards. And um, loads of them have got broken switches. Okay, so let's get that. I'm having difficulty getting that to stay down on the board. I'll do it like that. Right, so what I'm going to, what uh, my idea is, is I'm going to get some tweezers and I'm going to go in and I'm going to hold this like so, either side. And then I'm going to put the soldering iron on the top and try and lift it off. All right, I might need to use flux, but that's 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 the idea. So I go in from the top, heat up the inductor from the top. Do a little bit from the side as well. What I'm hoping is that this will at some point come off. All right, so it's not coming off very easy. So I'm going to add a bit more. I could put flux on here, but I'm not going to yet. Um, I'm going to add a bit of solder to the iron. And I'm doing that just for heat transfer on this occasion. Probably slightly too much um, for normal use. But uh, here we go. So there's the chip. I try and put that blob of solder on the top while I'm lifting slightly with the tweezers. Remember, this is the donor board. This is the board that's already broken. Um, but Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to come off very well, does it? Right, I'm going to try, let's try some flux on it. That looks a bit like Terminator 2000. Hmm. OK, so here's the flux again, maybe about five pound to get one of those. I had to buy a little a little needle kit. Uh, they're not um, very sharp needles. They're just open at the end. And what I'm going to do is find the inductor. There's the inductor and just put a lot of so a lot of flux around that. Once I put the uh, soldering iron on that this time, we should see um, a lot of a lot of excitement. Just going to try and grab it again first with the tweezers. Get it lined up on the microscope, and here we go. Right.
So I'm applying gentle force upwards with the tweezers. That doesn't seem to want to play. Wondering whether this soldering iron is actually hot enough. No, it doesn't look like it. Let's go and have a look at the parts again. Yeah, I don't think I've melted the part. I've uh, made the ends enjoyable. Yeah, all right. So that's 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 not working. But this is an experiment. It might just be that this soldering iron just isn't powerful enough. I'm just going to, just in case I can get more heat coming from it. Um, so I've now plugged it into the two, into the uh, into the two amp outlet of this. I have to turn it on again, make sure it's red. All right, that's the hottest. Um, I'm going to clean this. Just a little silver cleaning thing, or I could use a little copper cleaning thing, or I could use that pad again. Um, let's just see whether that heats it up anymore let's try on top for a bit first it doesn't want to come out All right, so it looks like I'm not going to be able to do it with this this particular iron. I'll try something different. I'm going to go in underneath here with the iron. And the idea is I'm trying to lift up one side a little bit. This time I'm pushing a little bit gently, gently with the iron while I'm lifting. Oh, now that's it. So did you see that I managed to lift up one side? So hopefully now, if I go in there again, melt that, blob there, and there you go. All right, so managed to lift it. And I'm going to just put that to the side, leave it in exactly the same orientation so I don't lose that. All right, now just looking at this now, have I ruined the um, pads? Now it doesn't look like I have, you see, that pad looks quite clean. Uh, this is a donor board, so it doesn't matter that much, but um, it's useful to practice. Have I lifted that pad off yet? No, I haven't. That actually might be something from the underside of the... Uh, yeah, I think that's the underside of the the inductor. Right, okay, but we might get away with that. On the inductor, the inductor's got a top and it's got a bottom. So let's go back and show you this. So this is the board that I'm putting it back on. All right, so there it, there's, there's that. And I'm going to just carefully, well, clean my soldering iron again first. You know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to add some flux to this while I'm there. Soldering stuff on, that's always the time for flux. All right. Now the point is, so that's there ready and that's primed and prepped. So let's have a look at this um, This. I keep on meaning to call it a choke. I think an inductor is also called a choke. It can be. Just check underneath this and see what's how it looks. All right, I mean, it's a bit dirty because it's got the flux on, but let's have a look at the O underside. Okay, so that doesn't look damaged, so that's good. So let's... Find this again next to my switch. There it is, and 
I'm just going to clean clean the tools and clean this as well just take a little bit because it's a bit sticky and just clean the ends of those get rid of the stickiness all right so here I am here's my here's my inductor then slightly cleaner doesn't look damaged so I don't know what that was that was on the board but I think we'll be fine you can also put the these L2s on the other way so if I look at if I look at the underside of it noted I've just turned that round see it's exactly the same underneath as it is on the top so uh, they seem to work both ways so let's pop him it's actually much harder to do on the microscope than doing um without me recording it this way anyway so I'll pop that on there get them lined up above the holes now I'm going to get my soldering iron and just push down on that end Yeah, that's done it. That was a bit wobbly. Let's add a bit of solder. I hope that's done that side. I think it needs to be pushed over a little bit. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to solder one side down. So I'm going to add a bit to that again. I'm going to hold this down with my, just hold it down with my tweezers like that. I think I'm going to come in from the side. just slipped out of vision there but that's got the one side down so now I'm going to come in try very carefully to just come in from the top over here see that thing that says 2k I need to not touch that that's going to be quite hard not to touch that so pop the tweezers on the top and then just come in there and then hopefully that's uh, there you go that's done the second side right so I'm hoping that has um, that has replaced it so that's how to replace an L2 um, it was a bit fiddly but I am using I am using very cheap tools which was the point of it so while that's there uh, I'm going to uh, clean it up a little bit I definitely think that is on that is on nice and strong there so that's good just go in there spray you can get isopropyl anywhere um, really it's quite safe on circuit boards you see all the all my rubbing here it's uh, that choke that um, inductor L2 is firmly on there and you can see its little name L2 there just on the top and that L2 still shows all right so hopefully now that has um, replaced it I'm just looking at the just looking at the side there if you notice this side um, the metal that the solder is um, nice and shiny all the way there's a, there's a gap there See, there's a gap. Oh, I think it's just that's all right. Yeah, examining it from more angles, just hoping that it's uh, it's connected. What about that? Hmm. Maybe I'm not connected at the bottom. Okay, so let's take some, take the soldering iron. There's a solder, and then the soldering iron, and I'm just going to go in and. 
add some soldering at the same time. Probably a bit too much. And I've also, ha, I've nobbled the top of that 2K. Hopefully that'll just come off. Right, so uh, there. So that's how you replace a L2 from a donor board um, with the cheapest of equipment. Now you might this might not fix your DS. It, this is just an example of how you can do it with cheap tools. Your DS is broken anyway. Um, this is a way that you can attempt to do it. You can buy these L2s um, off eBay. Just be careful because the L4 is a slightly different value. So just make sure that um, some places will just sell replacement ones. But the L2 is slightly different from L4. So make sure if this one comes off that that's the one that you replace. Um, forgotten where uh, Forgotten where L4 is now underneath somewhere can't remember all right but uh hope that helps hope that's of an interest so it is possible to do it um using the the cheapest of tools